Chapter 3 is all about systems of linear equations and inequality. There are about five sections we'll be looking at, and the first one is titled Solving Systems by Graphing or Substitution. So you can see today's learning goal. We want to review um, systems of linear equations and two variables by graphing and by substitution. You have done a little of uh, both um, in your previous courses, but let's talk about um, graphing and a couple new vocabulary words first. So if you think about graphing and we're doing linear equations, you should be thinking of, well, there's different types of lines. And right away, you can have um, one line, two lines, three, infinite. We're going to be talking about a system. And a system must contain at least two. Most of ours are going to be just two. So if you start thinking about two lines, then you better be thinking we could have two lines that are intersecting, two lines that are coinciding, and two lines that are parallel. And you can see the different illustrations of what we were looking for. Now, a lot of people think intersecting is the same as perpendicular. They are not. Perpendicular is a special type of intersecting where two lines are actually intersecting at 90 degree angles. But there are lots of other types of intersecting lines other than those at, um, at 90 degrees. Coinciding we consider as those two lines are basically on top of each other. They probably come from equations that did not look alike to begin with, but once you manipulated them, got them ready to be graphed, those two lines did then look a lot alike, if not exactly. And then parallel lines we learned in geometry Parallel lines must have the same slope. They are equidistant. They never cross. They never touch. So that's what we're looking at. Those are the three types of systems we will be graphing. Now, a couple new vocabulary words is um, that what you classify each system. So if you think consistent is, as definition says, a system of equations with at least one solution. If I have a solution, I could be intersecting. Because where do they intersect? They intersect at that one point where they cross. So if I talk about that, that would have a consistent um, solution. Also, coinciding. If you think coinciding, how many places do these two lines share points? And it's infinite. Okay. Up here we have one and only one x, y. We have many or infinite solutions when we have coinciding lines. And then we have absolutely no points when we have the parallel lines. And so therefore we have to say no solution. So your dependent um, if a system has exactly one solution, it's called independent, so exactly one is where that came from. Uh, dependent is a system that has infinitely many solutions. And so if I don't have infinitely many, if I don't have exactly one, then I can't be called independent or dependent. And that's why you see parallel lines are only inconsistent because they are a system of equations with no solution. So we can say consistent and independent for intersecting, consistent and dependent for coinciding, and inconsistent for parallel lines. Now, a quick reminder, when we graphed in the past, we've always used slope-intercept form as our best bet would continue to be your best bet. Um, graph both lines on the same coordinate plane. See what happens, uh, which type of lines you get, and that should be your solution. Make sure you state your solutions, not just what type of lines you have. What type of lines does not tell you how many solutions. be able to then come to class with some characteristics for each type of lines you graph. 
So when we're talking about graphing, there better be some pros to it and some cons. What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? And that's what we'd like to list together to see um, what we consider the good points and poor points of graphing. Substitution method is next. And in the substitution method, um, you should remember that one of the equations should have x or y by itself. So the difference here is that when we talked about um, graphing, we were using y equals mx plus b to graph. You always had to get y by itself when you had to graph. But now, if we don't solve an equation by graphing, and we solve by another method, the substitution method, then we just need one of the equations should have an x or a y by itself. It does not matter which equation, and it does not matter which variable, x or y. You would then substitute that equation into the other equation for that variable. We'll be showing you that in an example. You would then find that x or y value that you did not have, and then you'd be able to solve for the other value. So this is a quick process called substitution, replacing one thing for another in your equation. Um, what I highly recommend when you do substitution is you take your two equations and um, you look at them and you put one beside the other because you want to keep track of which one's going where. So right now, we sort of got rid of that bottom line and said, all right, these are our two equations. And some people were looking at it. One of the equations should have x or y by itself. Okay, they do not, um, my opinion, I believe the first one's easier to get y by itself. So I'm going to rewrite it. y equals moving that 7x to the other side. So now I have that equation where y is by itself. Substitute that equation into the other equation for that variable. So what we're really saying is, if y equals this quantity, 6 minus 7x, that I could replace it into any other equation that has a y. So in doing that, I am now going to substitute it over into this other equation that we haven't used. So 5x stays minus my y value, which is now being replaced with 6 minus 7x, all has to be equal to the number 2. Now we will solve for the only variable remaining, and that's why it's nice. It now only has one variable. I can solve for one variable. Before it had two, there's no way I'm going to be able to solve for x or y. So finish the math, do your simplify. I'm going to distribute the subtraction sign first. Look at what I have remaining. Combine the like terms on the left-hand side. 5x and 7x will give me 12x. Move that 6 to the other side as an add 6. That'll leave us a 3. Divide by 12 on both sides. And we will get x equals 1 fourth. If x equals 1 fourth, what are you going to do for your y value? Substitute it. If x equals 1 fourth, we've got 6 minus 7 times 1 fourth. Better change that 6 to fourths, which would be 24 fourths. Take away this to 7 fourths, and that'll leave us with 17 fourths. If you like 4 and 1 fourth, that's okay, 4.25. So we're going to end up with an xy ordered pair of 0.25 and 4.25. So from there, we should be able to um, say that this is a system, if we were to graph, that has two lines that intersect, and they intersect at the point. 
also make a second chart saying what are the characteristics, pros and cons for substitution. You will hopefully find some that overlap, some that don't, some that are unique to just substitution, some that are unique to graphing. Those will be ones we want to discuss when we come to class. Um, to see if we see anything glaring in our list. All right, so doing that, you should be able to work on the problems, bring any questions you have to class tomorrow, and we'll see where we're at.